All right. Yeah. Blessings, everyone. Well, <laughs> this is great. We love to keep it spontaneous Woo! at Soulgy, and sometimes the universe works with us. I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. You know, I was I was hanging around the studio yesterday afternoon, and then they told me that. First, they told me it was a seven-year anniversary today, and I didn't even remember. I was like, oh, my God, and that hit me. And I started having all these flashbacks of walking on the street and all the stuff I went through and not giving up. And I started getting all teary, and they're like, sit down on the couch because Sandra Walter is going to come on the show tomorrow. <laughs> and I'm like, Are you, what? Well, I was, so I was like, Robin, oh, my God. And Robin uh, was like, it's Todd's seven-year anniversary tomorrow. And I was like, well, I, I just received a – invite to try to schedule something and then i was like mm -hmm. seven that's like a magic number i'm like how about we just throw me in the schedule so here i am happy anniversary beautiful brother that's you know that's an Thank accomplishment you. and and i know as a as a fellow way shower doing the work consistency toe in the line standing on the front lines and everything is no easy task so congratulations well, doing the good work. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you very much. And, and let me just say on behalf of everybody, thank you for your service to humanity. You know, I didn't know your story in depth, but I read through your bio. And, so, and I have seen your stuff over the years. Morgan sends it to me. Will send me stuff sometimes, some of your stuff. And, but I didn't know your story. You, you basically have been doing this since 1999. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I went suddenly Wow. Audie and Claire Cognizant in 1999, and it wasn't at this level at all. But that's when my kind of trigger point to to wake up and start on this path began. So, and I've been writing so since then. Yeah. So, did you have any inkling that there was something else to all this before '99, or? Did you just snap to it? Yeah, then? absolutely. And I just, I, I would like every, in, to invite everyone in this now moment because we have this huge influx of energy coming in right before we begin. Right? So everyone just take a breath and kind of feel into that. You know, we're actually, technically, we're still in a gateway. So this is opening up all these gates for, for the June solstice. And we just went through two very intense weeks. That's why everyone's feeling so sleepy and a little spacey and everything it's because we're taking this whole thing up to another level so i just want to honor that in this moment just everyone just hold your heart take a breath and kind of feel into it it's like okay here we go <laughs> um and the the conversation mm -hmm. so um and it's so it feels so surreal to talk about the past in the state of consciousness that we're anchoring in and we're feeling right now. So I will lightly touch on my past journey, but all of us are um, attempting to stay so present and so in the now that it feels really strange to talk about the past because it feels like a different person. I mean, I, I, there have been several points in my journey where I feel like a completely different person as just these higher and higher selves coming in to, um, to kind of take over the, the journey. And that's just a, a result of saying yes to the ascension process itself, you know, and all of us, as we move into this unity, this pure state of unity consciousness, you feel the past dissolving. So for those of you who aren't familiar with my journey or my work, um, I'll touch on that, but also realize that it feels like it's a million years ago, a million lifetimes ago. It's all kind of dissolving. Um, so yes, I did go suddenly, uh, Claire Audie and Claire Cognizant in 1999. I was in Chicago, I was, which is like a trigger city for me because I lived there twice and both times that I moved there. Um, significant, thing, significant things happened for my journey. But uh, it was the consistency. I started receiving messages, didn't really understand that. But before that, I had had, like many of you, so many episodes and experiences and consistent seeing through the veils as a child that it made sense. So when it happened, it was just a natural 
part of my journey. I was like, oh, now this is happening, you know, that kind of thing. Because even as a child, I had interaction with galactic levels or angelic levels, masters that would come into my field. And they were just, when you're a child, they're more like, um, you know, your invisible friends, <laughs> you know, your the people that oh. are uh, supporting you. So I always had that awareness turned it off or dimmed it down rather uh, as you get older and get distracted with life and different things that are presenting. I had a significant experience when I was about 20 of um, that was an answer to a question because I was, I was raised Catholic, but I always had a very, um, a very open idea of what source was and what God was and what love was. And I didn't judge the church so much as I just felt like something else was going on. Uh, so at 20, I had this experience of, I asked uh, during a past life regression, I asked to see God. I wanted to know what God was. And the, and the regressions, you know, they take you back uh, as far back as you can go and then further back and further back as you go into like three different levels going further and further back in your own personal timeline trajectory and the third one i was in my alien form i was an et you know you you step out of your body and look at yourself and i was like i'm i'm an alien you know at that point i was it was alien it was an et you know this is back in in you know late 80s and i was like oh okay but it was so me it was so vibrant and so familiar that it didn't I didn't even blink at what what that was I was like oh there's my ET self you know kind of thing and then step back into my body and then the question presented the answer to the question presented and it was just the veils just ripped wide open and I had that beautiful experience that we get in meditation or in these activations of being in absolute divine oneness, you know, the, just the ceiling rips open all the different realities. And it was just multiverse, multidimensional, absolute fusion with source. And it, and absolutely beautiful. And it's wonderful that we can attain that now more regularly as all of us move into unity consciousness. So I carried that with me as my truth, as the divine truth. So I always knew that, well, that there's that thing is there and everything else is, is bizarro land. You know, it was just illusion oh. and the journey and everything, but you still have this like higher perspective of like, yeah, that's what we're, what we're playing with down here, but there's this other thing. So it kept me um, interested in spiritual growth and expansion and creativity. And then when I went clairaudient in 99, all the messages that came in in the beginning were all about creativity and what was going to unfold with a shift in consciousness and a dimensional shift. And in 99, they were talking about the towers falling and that's when we're going to rebuild humanity. And certainly when 9-11 um, happened a couple years later, I was like, wow, you have my, my attention. Okay. And I literally sold everything, wow. moved out of Chicago, went straight into mission and have been in that mode ever since. So, Wow. It was powerful. It was a wow, that's activation. Pretty... And 9-11, of course, was a strong activation for a lot of star seeds that were like, all of a sudden it was like, oh, there's that thing, <laughs> that trigger point, you know? So very, very powerful for most of us. So you moved out of Chicago at that point and started doing the work full time? Well, I had, I had been traveling quite a bit. So I'm, I'm not somebody who sits still <laughs> for very long. Um, so as soon as, as soon as I left my hometown back in Williamsville, New York, um, which is Western New York, uh, I, I was in Chicago and then I was in California and I was in Charleston. I was, I've moved all over the place. Um, and then once I had my, my gatekeeper uh, activation, then it became very direct as to where I was to travel to, what I was to, um, what I was to do. So my team got very direct about location, what I'm supposed to do, abandon everything, go here, you know, and many grid workers and gatekeepers are familiar with that. It becomes overwhelming, 
you know, your journey will, and, and I learned too, because right before 9-11 happened, my journey was falling apart. It was just like the job, the boyfriend, the home, everything was just wrong, you know, and my car got wrecked and everything like that. And, and we always, you know, now we learn uh, when those changes in trajectory are about to happen and you start seeing the signs, you're like, mm, got to pay attention. Something's going to change. Yeah. And it, it does that frequently, yeah. you know, because we're always asking for the highest trajectory, the highest level of service that we can provide. And when we're asking for that, yeah. signs come. Yeah. yeah. The universe puts you in a place you have no other choice. Yeah, I'm so <laughs> if you don't. I've been in Mount Shasta for this long. Um, you know, speaking of anniversaries, we just had, well, I just had my six year anniversary of being here in Mount Shasta. And. Wow, two, congratulations. Two years of the Sunday Unity Meditations, which is wonderful. So we've been doing that every week for two years. And it's got this beautiful field around it. And I invite everyone to participate in that. You know, we've been doing it consistently three times on Sunday, these unified meditations. And we do it offline so that it trains us how to connect telepathically and through the heart. And the field gets so palpable you can feel it even when it's not on sunday now but we're all getting very connected those of us who are in service to bringing in peace and harmony and love and you focus on that and it's these three little 33 minute sessions on sunday but when we keep hitting it it's like any spiritual practice when you the consistency builds spiritual strength and spiritual power and then you're able to utilize that in your own life stream or for all these gateways and amplifications now because the more people that get into that willingness to participate rather than wait for an event or the sun to go off, right thing like that the better so this occurs every sunday three times on sundays yeah. and where is it coordinated? Is it on your page or website? Yeah, you can. Uh, I send out reminders. Uh, it's all posted on the website consistently, sandrawalter.com. Okay. Um, I send okay. out reminders with the newsletter if you want to sign up for the newsletter. I post it on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter to remind people, oh, yeah, it's Sunday. You know, let's get together. So, And it's beautiful. There's a free guided meditation, the Christ Light Expansion uh, exercise. It's on YouTube is used by a lot of people on that Sunday. So we get this really strong, expanded field of this divine love. And it's, it's palpable. Wow. And it changes you. You know, it, everyone's visions are, are getting stronger. Um, people start seeing the same things. You know, you start seeing more archangelic presence. You start seeing the galactic levels. You start seeing Gaia herself. You start seeing the gateways. We just had... Um, Two weeks ago, we had the opening of the Creator Gates, which is this huge influx of really pure source light. That's why everyone got so sleepy over the last couple of weeks. Um, but it's, it's sending us on this higher collective trajectory of ascension. And that's going to get very, very strong over the next couple of weeks because solstice, the June solstice is another trigger point. So... Well, it seems like it. It seems like since the 1st of May, it's just been at warp speed. Absolutely. You know, it seems like it's been moving re real fast. Yeah, and this is a year of all of us moving into that higher trajectory. So it's we had a dramatic shift at, in December. And, that, and because it had to be collective, because the, the way showers and everyone who's awake and following ascension... Um, on our, our higher levels, had <laughs> kind of a divine powwow and decided, um, let's, you know, let's do this thing. Let's have this uber blast of pure light because there's so many people aligned with their heart. There's so many people aligned with what unity consciousness and divine love truly means. They can feel it. It's not a catchphrase or something that you talk about or something that you're pretending until I get there. People are really feeling this. People are really feeling unity consciousness being anchored into the, into the collective human heart grid. 
And it doesn't matter whether people are awake or not. The higher vibration of that, I call them the high vibe tribe, the light tribe, the vibration oh. is by quantum proxy raising up everyone into the higher trajectories. So it's, and because so many people are agreeing to that on a soul level, that's why we're having right. these dramatic emanations. Really beautiful. Yeah. And that's everybody on the earth. Everybody's being moved up. Is that right? And then we're rich. some are more aware of it. It's like um, bandwidths of frequency. So if someone's vibrating with a really low frequency and a really high frequency comes along, it's going to, the higher vibration, the vibration gets so high that it starts pulling people up into a higher timeline experience. And then they go through their ascension process, their awakening in a very, uh, a much more accelerated way. So people that stepped in, say like a first waiver, uh, you know, it took decades to to get to where they are and now that it is a collective vibration and that Gaia yeah. already ascended and has already created that platform now we're migrating the realities to that higher platform so somebody who is um not experiencing ascension is kind of getting the light by proxy it's global it's yeah. here you know, it's still their personal free will choice that's always honored. Personal free will choice to engage. You know, it's always some, somebody yeah. is like, I don't believe it. I don't feel it. I don't want unity. They won't. You know, they, they will buy right. access. And that's, and that's absolutely fine. You know, the, we have to honor that free will choice of those beings who are just, you know, there's some soul groups that are just like, going to wait to the last second, <laughs> you know, but it is, um, but the platform for 3D and 4D is dissolving, you know, it's, it's going away. Yeah. Technically it's already gone. So it's, um, yeah, it's kind of interesting, but it's, it's the higher bandwidth of the people who are just going for it and really embracing the solar cosmic Christ, the, to be a pure conduit of that, eternal cosmic light that is source consciousness that's making the difference that's accelerating it and everything is moving really quickly and it's yeah it's perception too because some people are like i don't see any change and it's like you have an open invitation to take a look at what's happening with the light trap what's happening with all the people who are awake right now and take a look yeah. open your heart and go they are having a radically different experience. What's going on there? Yeah. You know, so it's personal. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and a couple of hours ago, it seemed like two or three hours ago, something came in. You made reference to it. Was, was that what you were saying? Was it a couple of hours ago? Just Yeah. Because we felt it here. Morgan and I felt it here. Yeah. It was absolutely. It's like, wow. Um, yeah, <laughs> and the and these waves can feel that way moving forward. Um, they're very. Um, it feels physical. You know, it does feel physical. All of a sudden, I'm like yeah. whoa! I mean, people were texting me right before here. They're like, "Oh my gosh, what's going on?" It's like, hold on, you know. And the other thing is too, you know, our intention to unify, small or large, um, always assists. You know, this, the second you have people together, unified in that intention, um, it's beautiful. But this is this is a, a gateway, you know. And when the gateway is open for pure source consciousness to return to everyone, you know, it's God coming back to us. It's what all promises right. were about. And when it starts becoming more palpable for the people who are opening themselves as conduits, you tend to feel a little spacey, a little like, wow, you know, it, you might get sleepy, that's DNA activations, you have to lay down. Some of these frequencies are only uh, integrated through sleep state. <laughs> so it's uh, yeah. like that now. Yeah. yeah, but it is palpable. Which is, yeah, which is interesting because it's like uh, last night I went to bed at 
uh, maybe one o'clock, and I woke up at three thirty-three because I know it's a special day, and I knew something was going down. But but at the same time, I'll get sleepy and <clears throat> lay down for an hour during the day. You know, it, so it just it's strange because it's, the the patterns are totally off. Or there are no there are no patterns anymore. It seems like. Yeah. Well, it's better sometimes just to take the nap so that you don't. So your your mind you know your mind has to turn off in order for for this to fully come online. And the um, and we're doing so much work in sleep state. You know, when you're tired, just honor it. Know that you know. I I wanted to make sleep masks that said needed upstairs. You know, <laughs> and. Uh, as, you know, we're working on, at a multidimensional level, and when you're very aware of that, it um, it becomes quite interesting. You know, you you just like drop everything. It's just like being a gatekeeper. You'll drop everything yeah. when you get that tap. You know, when you get that alert, like here we go, coming in, open up. And the the last couple of weeks have been um, very intense gate work and grid work. Just setting us up for this particular influx and it's it's beautiful yeah. you know? and it's just continual you know if you're a gatekeeper or a grid worker or a light worker and you've been anchoring these frequencies or, or working on the grids um you know it becomes gosh almost like a lifestyle you know just like ascension becomes a lifestyle where you're so consistently in service and so attuned to the kingdoms and the elementals and Gaia and the sun, you know, for my, um, for my consciousness, for my connection, it's um, solar gateways and an off world cosmic stargates. Mm -hmm. um, and that can be a, a very strong out there experience, you know, very difficult to describe. But when you feel that light, you know, everyone, you, when you feel that coming in, sometimes it feels palpable, like you're like a, a wave will come right through your ascension column, your pillar of light, your threefold flame, whatever you want to call it. When you feel it coming in to your energy fields, that kind of like instantaneous, um, strong beam like <laughs> sensation um, and you're familiar with it, you know, when you're familiar with that divine love and it tends to um, further your bliss states you know there's just so it's so blissful and it's so beautiful that um, you immediately you know either put your hands on your heart put your hands together put your hands up and offer yourself as a conduit for absolute pure divine love whatever this is coming in I open myself as a conduit for the pure and true organic ascension, these cosmic rays of evolution, photonic light amplifications, for the pure light of source to return to all of my brothers and sisters. And when you, when you connect with that and you feel it, you can feel entire oversoul groups getting activated. You know, and and wow. it, doesn't, it doesn't matter if um, you're getting the pings from... You know, I, I have a, a network of people that will text me, you know, kind of like, hey, sister, feeling this? Yep, okay, anchoring this, you know, my gate, my little gatekeeper network. You know, there's a few close friends that um, we we rarely talk. You know, most of them are offline. But it uh, when strong things happen, we're like, mm-hmm, here we go. You know, and it's, we connect, you know, instantaneously we connect. We're like, mm, okay, you know, I don't need the text to, to know when um, we're going to connect. You know, it's the m moment you feel it instantly. <sighs> okay, everybody on board. And it, you, yeah. you can feel, and uh, of course, because of the Sunday Unity meditations, we can feel each other's field. We can feel that collective, here we go, you know, in the now moment. So there's no need for technology. You know, there's no need. Or, yeah. um, the kind of grounded technology, which was one of the intentions outside of unifying us and teaching us how to feel uh, these energies as a united force of source. Um, you, you can feel your brothers and sisters. You can feel that one unified heart beingness. And it dramatically changes your energy fields. It 
it changes your DNA. All of a sudden you're getting back all the stuff that was planted here for the ascension, you know, for this particular wow. moment on this particular higher trajectory, primary Christed timelines that we are experiencing. And it's beautiful. And you just hold the, hold the intention of being that conduit, speaking, feeling, thinking, all, all of your actions, your words, and your deeds start aligning with mastery. And that's something that doesn't need to be done in a cave in a mystery school anymore. You know, it's something that we do in, right. in our lives. And it's just practice. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm, I'm triggered and I'm trying to clear and there's things banging on my fields and everything. It's like, feel, feel in this now moment, your mastery self your Christed presence, your angelic presence, whatever it is that you're connected to in the higher realms. And when you feel that and know that that is untouchable and that is omnipotent in its own way because it is pure source consciousness that is uh, attempting to shine right through you. No more separation, no more separation from God, no more separation from source. And then you, re you have to remind yourself, you know, all, all through this process, we're consistently catching ourselves. You know, this is, this is an, an exercise that I'm going to recommend again, because you have to remind the tribe quite often, speak, use your language, use your communication as a way to convey these frequencies. Everything has that light, that frequency, those crystal codes. So whether you're typing it out, or whether you're speaking it out, or whether you're thinking it out, carry, you know, remind yourself of that Christed presence, that almighty I am, whatever you want to call it, your divine presence. And you become an example of that. And you become, you train yourself how to shift your energy fields into divine sacred geometry, into divine proportions. And then you start aligning with zero point. And once you get in, once you start accessing zero point, that absolute pure oneness, that absolute, there's, you know, there's nothing there but absolute source. Consciousness is purity. Divinity is beyond the, the light and how it expresses and everything. When you get into there, that's where those really deep activations of these pure source codes these higher levels of DNA, all of that can occur because you're allowing it. You're allowing your own empowerment. You're embracing your own empowerment to be a conduit of that light. And it does change you and it will change the way that you speak. And until, until you get there, you practice and you catch yourself. Yeah. 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 We had a 12 year old boy on yesterday. And I asked him, what do your classmates say about the world? And he said, well, the world's crashed. And I said, well, where does it go from here? And he said, well, less technology and more nature. Yeah. And I was just thinking about what you said about when these energies come down, you don't need a text. You automatically know that you guys are going to connect to that collective field mm -hmm. and, uh, and do the work. It almost sounds like, to me, like uh, emerging it, from that individual to that collective. It is. That's what unity consciousness is. There is no more separation between me and you. I'm literally having a conversation with myself in this now moment. You know, when you get there and you see so, I love you so much. And whether you're looking in the mirror or looking at Todd in my cell phone, it doesn't, it just doesn't matter. You're like, wow, everything else was just game and here we are in this now moment broadcasting absolute divine love there's nothing else here no. you know and I'm, I'm sure you can feel that i hope other people can feel that too well, but when you oh, when yeah. you get to that point then in in shasta we call it the heart phone you know when you want to call somebody in uh but we don't use technology <laughs> you know you're just no really uh, i want to talk to sandra today you know and you're 
wandering through the meadow. And, oh, there! Thank you. You got my call. <laughs> you know, we always go. Oh, you got my heart phone call. <laughs> you know, and it's just when you when when you're in that, it's a the, the Christ consciousness at its at its best is the interconnection, interwoven uh, lattice work of all that is. So it's not just your, it, it's multidimensional self at, at the purest form, but while you're experiencing Gaia, it's your interaction with the kingdoms and the elementals and everything. You feel that Krishna state, you know, I am the ocean washing on my ankles. I am my ankles, I am the sand under my feet. I am the sun hitting my eyelashes. I am the cosmic stargates. I am source, you know, you become all of that. And when you breathe into that and really feel it, all the other nonsense goes away. And you're just like, oh, okay. Yeah. So then you can, you have this um, ex true experience of multidimensional, multidimensionality, where you are that oneness, and then all the fractals that you are on a, in a different star system, in a different galaxy, in a different universe, in a different expression on a planet, a different expression as a star, a different expression as a angelic master, star brethren, all of that. You start feeling the, the full breadth of that multidimensionality. And that's the, and that is truly an activation that comes through the heart center. It doesn't work without it. It truly doesn't. Mm. You won't have that awareness until the heart is open to embracing all, all that is and embracing um, truly an, an ascension path, you know, a path of, okay, I am going to pursue this no matter what. And when you, when you get to that point in your journey where I'm going to speak my truth and I'm going to honor everyone, sometimes in, in the beginning of, uh, of an awakening, you know, people will learn different fragments of the truth from others or what they stumbled upon online or they have an experience. And then they, they want to kind of spray that information uh, on everyone. It's most, yeah. it, it's most complimentary, especially in these energies, to completely focus on divine love and your own divinity and the, finding the divinity in others. There's no one here who isn't a divine spark of source in one way or another. So when you can find that, um, there's, there's definitely a grace and a gentleness to that that makes these energies easier. And it's the only reason why I'm mentioning this right now is because as the energies amplify and these gateways get broader and more um, direct for um, many of the, the folks that are anchoring these energies, um, it may get quite intense this year, but intense in a good way. Mm. Intense in a good way because it is acceleration of everyone's journey. So when people who were, you know, maybe on the fence about ascension or on the fence about spirituality start feeling something in a very palpable way, which is something that gatekeepers are constantly calling in for decades now, make it palpable for all concerned, make it palpable um, so that people will awaken. Because when they start feeling it, they, then they're, they start getting ascension curious and then hopefully they'll pursue a path of divine love. But as it gets more intense, understand that the intensity is dissolving all of those lower structures, all of those lower realities that have a very weak framework at this point. Now, technically, again, it's already gone. Technically, those lower realities um, went away prior to the end of 2012. And it's just the collective co-creation of more of the same that keeps those things running. And of course, there's a lot of beings who want to keep that running because they can't see beyond, um, you know, the kind of barrier of like, you have to activate your heart, otherwise you don't get to play in that ascended yeah. realm. So it's, and it's, it's key. And my guidance this year has been to 
focus on teaching people what I call the creator state of consciousness. And the creator state of consciousness, that is the Christ consciousness, the state of beingness as a divine human, allows you to fully realize your effect on your own reality and the collective reality. And the moment that a whole bunch of us start shifting, which is what the shift in consciousness is about because it was created by us in the higher realms. This whole journey, the more of us that are resonating with creating positive, loving, beautiful things, you know, because 5D and beyond amazing creations. And for those of you who are experiencing crystal consciousness or the higher realms, or uh, upstairs, as we call it, <laughs> you know, can have already uh, perceived how beautiful that is. And you notice there's very little distortion in those realms. So the more that we can focus on co-creating divine perfection, as close as we can get, divine love, divine life, pure freedom, you know, creating right. half of everyone, um, the faster those lower realities will just lose their energetic input altogether, which is, you know, kind of pulling the plug on those lower realities anyway, by all of us embracing this ascension path and all the work that the light workers and gatekeepers and grid workers are doing right now, and literally migrating entire oversoul groups, which is millions of people to higher trajectory wow. timelines. Yeah. And it's, wow. it's beautiful. It's palpable. Yes. Yes, it is, and yeah, it's like music to my ears. In fact, uh, I, I lose track of the shows, but we were just talking about this one or two shows back, using the same type of words that, that you're using, freedom being huge, you know, a huge um, characteristic, I guess. Uh, now, I don't want to get too caught up on the past, but I just got to ask you something. It must be an incredible journey for you to have started in 99 and watch all this stuff change over 20 years. I mean, I bet you're excited. You must be excited to have gone through all these early years. <laughs> I mean, this is not a blip on the screen. You know, it's beautiful. It's beautiful to be cognizant of that. But honestly, I mean, some mm. of you have been here for millions of years, you know, a long yeah. time. You know, much longer than than my incarn incarnate self. Um, so it's it feels like fat. I mean, it's just nothing. I even I asked my star family at one point. I was like, How, "What does it feel like for you? How long have I been gone?" And they're like, "You never left." You know, this yeah. just a fractal of your beingness is having this experience. You know, and yeah. That level, even star family level is not the be-all and end-all of all that I am. I have seen right. what our higher oversoul groups are up to, and it's quite incredible. You know, it's quite incredible. Yeah. So this, um, this, and, and it, it's not to, I, I want to be direct, it's not to belittle the experience. The experience yeah. is everything. You know, this is literally yeah. changing an entire universal structure with all that's going on and all the different densities changing the entire galaxy the entire galactic structure everything is being changed through what we are working on and it's not just here this has a very unique purpose gaia coming up crystallized um solar cosmic christed more solar spiritual sun type of planetary consciousness is um, is quite an accomplishment. You know, it's like our, our big creative project is to do this. And, you know, we've attempted it before, and now here's the one where we actually did it. So, yes, it's, a, it's an incredible experience, but it's, it feels, I mean, I, I can still feel the moment of the first message that I received. I still feel the moments of being mm. wild in, in my bedroom. You know, it's all happening now. I feel the moments of the yeah. bedroom and the stuff's moving around on its own and, you know, all that weird stuff flying around the backyard, you know, seeing, you know, coming back to bed and taking off my jumpsuit, <laughs> you know, all, all the mm -hmm. wild experiences, but it's all now. It's so pure, you know, it feels 
it and that's yeah. the thing about zero point is it feels it's there you can recall it but it's also kind of gone you know it's yeah. gone so the more that we can focus on what we are creating in the moment and the next moment and the next moment you know that that keeps us in the flow of where these energies are going and how this acceleration and amplification can truly help everybody everybody wants healing everybody wants peace at the core everybody wants peace. yes you know that's a command from source so even if you're you have so much distortion in your field that you're just like i'm out i don't want that experience it's it's going to happen by proxy you know there's a little bit of bifurcation yeah. along the way bifurcation of timelines and experiences and some beings that are like i want more density no matter what <laughs> you know they just they really yeah. bear that experience even for their own survival um they they do get that experience just not here you know, it just won't happen yeah in in this so creative. yeah and that was a great answer by the way you're right it's just a blink of an eye you're right and each day those memories are all here to to a greater and greater awareness within ourselves yeah. Um, what would you say, you know, I see people, I think you already answered this, but uh, struggling with the, the, uh, the tugs from the 3D, so to speak, you know, the labels that we carry, the functions that we have, the patterns, the behaviors, trying to pull away from that. It, it, on one hand, it looks like you said, uh, if, even if they don't make that choice consciously, it's done by proxy, mm -hmm. it's going to happen anyway. But on the other hand, you see, you see people still struggling with that. And maybe that's going away. Maybe that's fading. But I notice that people say, how do, I, how do I get away from that? How do I take these steps forward? The very first thing to remember is how strong you are. Brothers and sisters, you are immense beings poured into a tiny little skin suit. You know, it is, we have to remember how pure and how infinite we truly are. So when you come from that and, and you realize, oh, I'm just having this experience, but that experience is not all that I am, that can help. The other thing that helps is knowing that it is this structure, these structures do have a school-like quality to it. So you're learning on behalf of maybe your older soul group. You know, it's not it's not uh -huh. you. But it's also, it's, it's such training for creation dynamics. I love it. I absolutely love it that the that, that creator state of consciousness where you're aware of what you're creating each moment. When, when you're getting all of this beautiful training on all these different levels of how to become aware of your bi-located multidimensional self that's in multi-locations, um, and still function, you can realize like oh, yeah. what a high level of mastery that is. It's like, well, there's all these structures that were put in place and, and you can't blame other beings for creating those structures. It's us. Remember this in unity consciousness, yes. that this is all of us. You know, we have all participated either by, um, by creating it ourselves or by agreeing to it for so darn long. You know, it is, it is what it is, wow. but don't judge the self, you know, and don't judge others. You know, non-judgment is such a huge part of this Christly process, but it's, um, it's, it's having a, a sense of humor and joy and gratitude about even the, the stupidest of little things that present during the day and going, you know what, I can choose love and joy in this moment, no matter what. No matter what and sometimes yes you have to walk away from if it gets too intense if, it, if you're talking about uh, conflict or people trying to drag you into um, uh, mm -hmm. conflict scenarios and things like that sometimes it's better just to bless them and be on your way but when it comes to um, the the teaching of this creator and creation consciousness there's something that's really strong with that this year because we've got these levels of consciousness. Let me just go here for a second. Um, just getting hit. Um, yeah. So we've got this 5D overlay 
that a lot of people are experiencing. Beautiful, she's here already, done, right? Done deal, and you just migrate your reality and your consciousness into those fields and those creations that have already been created. Then you've got the 7D layer. A 5D layer feels like unity consciousness, just beautiful, heart-opening, joyful, loving, extremely creative, kind of like, you know, the schoolyard is out, you know, <laughs> and just kind of like, yeah, freedom. You know, it's, it's a very freeing mechanism. Sometimes it can feel very um, orgasmic. You know, it feels like your your energy fields and everything are just like in the state of, um, I call it blissgasms, you know, but it's, it's a, a very kundalini type sensation that might present um, absolute loving all that is no matter what you get very impermeable to um, the other things that are going on and then the 70 layer um, steps further in in my experience further into a purified unity consciousness where there's a lot of focus that's why we're doing these new earth now experiments right now because we understand how timeline dynamics and gateways work so you're able to focus you get a small bunch of people together you know as many as you can you get a small pe bunch of people together and you start playing with timelines as the present now reality and you have people experience feeling truly feeling what it feels like to be in a new earth now experience and that feeling mechanism activates not not only everybody in the group but it also we surge it out through the collective human heart grid so that it's available to everyone we've been doing this and it's just it seems to coordinate beautifully with these accelerations that are happening so it's a very complementary thing and in 70 there's this there's this purity of unity that's able to start um creating realities in a much stronger way it's a much purer state of christ consciousness and you get more access to uh, multi-dimensional self uh, simultaneously so you're able to feel mm -hmm. simultaneously rather than having to direct your consciousness like right now a lot of the folks that are having multi-dimensional awareness you have to kind of uh, direct your thought patterns and your heart to this dimension that dimensional level that expression um, in 70 that kind of goes away and you become more unified with your own expression simultaneously and then the 90 level and all these levels all these layers these overlays are are getting anchored by the gatekeepers and the grid workers right now and the 90 level is pure unity consciousness you don't even have to express as separate beingness anymore you know, this is something that the arturians are informing us about you know it's like we don't have to express as individual consciousness at all anymore um, which is interesting, you know, they'll do it for our benefit, but it's um, that layer, that overlay, that 90 energy is also being fully anchored into the planet now, which is why so many people are having that stronger experience of unity consciousness, coming into oneness, coming into divine love, feeling their own heart changing, your energy fields change as these DNA activations and everything occur. So while that's occurring you know you got all this going on but you still have to pay rent <laughs> you know you still have a dog you still have to, you know do whatever it is you know i'm i'm you know cleaning windows and trimming trees and you know all all those little things um that present but instead of waking up and going oh today is the day that i have to you know go and weed the garden or whatever everything becomes um, infused with this joy. And then it's like, oh, here I am playing this role of, you know, being here, doing mm -hmm. this and doing that and everything. And it becomes more joyful. And of course, there are times where you're just like, oh, how much longer, how much longer? And, every, and that's when you have to remind <laughs> yourself, create that mm. feeling in the now, create that feeling of freedom in the now. And the more people that do the freedom in the now and kind of deny access to that, looping program of like keep creating the same thing mm. you know uh, the more you didn't yeah. deny that access and be like i don't feel like doing the same thing anymore and you right. really into that creator state of like i'm going to practice every single moment of the day and come and fully embrace my mastery and go okay this is presenting this is presenting this is presenting you know because old 
you know, in the old dynamics, I probably wouldn't even be on Facebook live. I've been like, no, I have to focus on the gateway, you know. And I'm like, wait a minute, bring in the multidimensional self. Higher levels take care of the gate work and the sun is, uh, is very active right now. You know, take care of that. I'm going to meet with my brothers and sisters for this little window of linear time. And, uh, and yeah. you can feel it, you know. And then I, I can also feel myself checking in with that level. How's it going down there? How's it going up there? You know, that kind of thing. Um, but there is no separation. You know, it's also just consistently one, which is, which is beautiful. You know, and when you can feel that more and more, you know, you can change the energy around anything. I'll give you an example. This chair that I'm sitting in right here, I have, I have been um, somebody who's very, uh, <laughs> I, I've been very simplistic and very minimal about um, bringing any, anything in because I move quite often. And after years of moving around and moving towns and all this grid work and gate work and everything, you, you learn to minimize your belongings because you never know when you're gonna you know, pack up and go somewhere else. So I've been kind of allergic to belongings. Um, however, I want to, um, I'm creating these new classes. So I'm like, well, I need something to sit in and like a nice background and everything. So I, so I order this chair I live in a tiny town. We don't have furniture stores or anything like that here. So, so I order this chair and it comes in this, this giant heavy box and the UPS guy is like dragging it up the porch and you know puts it in the living room. And I'm like, uh, I'm looking at it and I'm like, thank you brother and everything. I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, it just feels like so heavy. Here's this belonging coming into my life stream and what am I doing? And I could have made do without it and everything. And I caught myself in that moment and I went, wait a second. There's nothing here but love. I can flip this thing. I can choose love in this now moment. And this became the most mm. glorious thing. I was like, thank you for the chair, for the abundance, mm. to bring it into my life and all the beautiful things that I'm going to create in it. You know, you just catch yourself and you flip it. And sure enough, I open up the chair. And this is, this is how the universe works when you flip the energy on a situation. I open it up and everything. It's a white chair. It's got a little tiny gray, something that's sprayed across the front of it, there's a little brown patch on the front. I'm like, oh, okay. So I call the manufacturer. It's got a little brown spot on the front. And they say, oh, well, don't return it. It's too heavy. Keep it, donate it. We're going to give you a refund. So I'm literally sitting in a gift. You know, it's just when you right. the energy of any situation and you go from gratitude and celebrating that you're right. physical rather than judging it or condemning it as something less than you know don't consider a physical incarnation as anything less than your dramatically high level beingness you know poured into these realities for a purpose and we all know i'm sure all of your tribe knows that divine love is the purpose it is the purpose of the star seeds and and all the light workers and everything to change these realities to assist in the ascension of these realities. And when you start applying that to the little things that present and honoring the way that you feel, you know, you don't want to deny the way that you feel, but I'll tell you the moment <laughs> that I said, I'm going to celebrate this as the most wonderful gift in this now moment. And then it, next thing you know, it's free. Um, you, you witness your, your, your energy fields changing. You written, witness your timelines changing it just and it affects everything it affects everything around you and then more things came in to complement this and it's just there's there seems to be some judgment of being in the physical as if it's um, a, a lower thing something that only lower be yeah it's not true it's just not true and yes we're surrounded by millions and millions of different expressions of truth. That's the whole point. You know, source doesn't create truth yeah. of any. That's why it's unique. That's why, you know, because all these fractals are supposed to express in different ways. And you can see, even on this planetary consciousness, when you try to get everyone operating in the same way and believing the same things, it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. Right. We're proving that right now, we're like it's supposed to be unique expressions, and even in unity consciousness, you're not morphing into one 
zombie-like expression of source. It, it's quite the opposite. You yeah. put all those fractals, and then you get all the fractals together, unify, going, what's the highest thing we can create? That's what the New Earth experience, is, New Earth Now experience is about, too. What's the highest thing we can create in this now moment? And when you travel down timelines, like what gatekeepers do, you're looking at the highest trajectory possible in that now moment. And then there are frequencies that come in and uh, stargates that open that allow that highest trajectory if it's called forth by folks on the ground, by uh, a mm. working together going now, now. There's that higher trajectory because the timelines are shifting all the time. Your personal timelines, moment to moment, all over the place. But collective timelines, wow. primary timelines that are created for a global shift in consciousness, um, you you get to little points on the timeline, which seems linear, but that's what you're dealing with in density. And you get to a certain point, and then you can take a look at the trajectories. And of course, you're not working alone. You're working with all these immense higher beings that are like <laughs> on the other side of the stargate going, whenever you say so, here it comes. Are you ready? Are you ready? And I've noticed too, like in my role, and in some of those council meetings that a lot of you are experiencing um, or the higher level collective beingness that's kind of um, weighing where humanity is, what they can handle, what they can't handle and everything, you'll notice right now what a tremendous acceleration is unfolding. And it's not something yeah. happening to you. It's something that you participate in. It's an opportunity. Yeah. And when you embrace that opportunity, you, you get your own highest timelines and highest trajectories. Hmm. Yeah. There's a, you know, there's a, I, I don't know how to say this. Uh, and of course, it's an observation. Because uh, I've been on the same trip everybody else has been. We get these powerful transmissions. We connect to certain essences. We connect to certain past life stories. And you start to see people getting past all that stuff. It's not relevant anymore. Right. We're relevant, you know. And uh, and that's a big change I've seen. Uh, and, and what you're talking about, too, this acceleration, it just, uh, it just blows my mind as I sit here and talk to these incredible people like yourself and wonder where are we going to be on the linear timeline in two or three months. I mean, it could be a totally different, it could be it could be something beyond our our wildest thoughts for something that could happen twenty years down the road. Mm -hmm. I mean, it seems to be moving that fast. It is moving quite quickly because, for for those of you uh, like myself who are experiencing a much less dense, a much less linear experience of time, you know, this has been going on for the last couple of years, but it's getting it's getting very wild this year, where it's just. You, you, you feel like, what reality am I going to wake up in <laughs> in the morning? Right. And, and you start getting, um, because, the, because the overlays are taking away the veils, you know, when you start bringing in 5D, 7D, 9D frequencies into these lower constructs, you know, and they're just constructs for, for the game that's right. playing out or whatever, um, it starts triggering all of the... Um, all, all of the people that are aware of their multidimensional self into a much more multidimensional experience, which is yeah. less linear. You know, you do have to remind yeah. yourself um, in a linear way. You know, I have like a little book and I have to remind myself, don't forget today's the day you have to do that or this or whatever. There's still the schedule thing, but it doesn't feel the same. You'll notice mm -hmm. the moment something is complete, it's gone. It's just gone. You know, we'll, we'll get off the, yeah. the phone today and it will be done. You know, it just feels like a million years yeah. ago already. And it's, it's beautiful, you know, because it puts us in that flow. Again, that's yeah. that 5D flowy, watery type sensation mm -hmm. where it's just like, wow, it just feels like everything is just so fluid and flowy. And it, it is much less dense. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's affecting your, your body and your energy fields, which is why you get that, that sensation. But it's, it's something that in our mastery, we really need to embrace. 
and have patience with each other. Yeah. When, you know, one of you is saying, I thought we were going to get together, but it's not happening. I'm, oh, I'm going this way, I'm going that way, or something else. Is, you know, even when we're having difficulty connecting uh, today, uh, like, it is what it is. Who cares? You know, it doesn't yeah. Don't yeah. carry all of that flotsam the yeah. old way of living anymore. You know, and all yeah. just, it again, it, it's bringing in non-judgment and gratitude for the now moment and whatever is, is. And the, when you treat yourself that way, when you don't judge yourself, you know, having, oh, I had to sleep for 12 hours. So what? It is what it is. Yeah. You just adjust. Yeah. You know, you just adjust. But it's beautiful that so many are having that nonlinear experience right now. Yes, we can connect. We can kind of anchor into a little timeline points and get together and have a Facebook Live or whatever. But um, the moment we step away from that, it's complete. It's done, you know? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and it seems to be like, because obviously I deal, this scheduling has gotten bigger and bigger. And it's, it's uh, uh, again, it's like, uh, uh, you know, I would say to people, let's do this, let's do that, and, and it wouldn't happen. I finally got to the point where, you know, like you said, uh, I don't know, how do you manage that timeline? I guess you do just have to write the stuff down and try to remember. And even if you forget, it's still okay. <laughs> I don't know how to put it. Yeah. But it, it's almost like we'll wake up one day and, and that will be gone because I see it in my own life. I see it like I got to do this, I got to do that, I got to do this. And then I'll just say, you know what? It's going to be all right. And then. All of a sudden, like you said, this flow, everything will just fall right into place. It'll just go boom, 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 and everything's perfect. Yeah, simplicity definitely helps, you know, taking away anything that just doesn't matter. It just doesn't have to have to be done. You know, we're, we're doing that to ourselves. Yeah. But, yeah, the simplicity definitely, definitely assists with that. And we're all going through it. There is no solution yeah. to being in in density and this higher experience you know this is the unfolding i mean it definitely assists to communicate that to other people who are having that experience because sometimes when the energies get really intense it really um assists to have a way shower that says yes also having that experience yes right now yes but, i mean i had a full-on I, I spent um Sunday night, no, the full moon night, a couple nights ago on the mountain, um, because I am a dutiful gatekeeper. So I slept up there. And it, and the experiences that unfolded up there were so non linear and so, like, just a direct, a really direct um, signal of how the overlays are. Are, are just merging our consciousness into this awareness of simultaneous things happening. I was, you know, I was, I'm laying down in my sleeping bag at, at the same time that my body's there. I'm also having this, this uh, very dream state-like experience of lightship level coming in. And I have, you know, my, my third eye open and looking around at all the lights and the beings and everything like that. But I'm also... I just, I had to force, you know, my linear eyes to open in the middle of that. I'm like, is this, wow, like the overlay is so, the veil is so thin in those, uh, in those experiences. Mm. And they do become very nonlinear because even trying to recall that is like, what, what happened? That was kind of cool. You know, that, that kind of thing. It, um, it, it does assist to express that to your brothers and sisters in an open way so that they can, you know, the people who need to make linear sense of their experiences have your guidance, have your camaraderie. You know, mm -hmm. It's important that all of us step into uh, being guides and not guides from a, this is the truth and the other thing isn't the truth. It's this wide open heart space of let's take a look at what we're all experiencing as a collective and ground these experiences into the human heart, you know, again, human heart grid into the collective by talking about them. Or if you're embracing the kind of light level, feeding out through the field, that's what we do every Sunday, 
feeding that peace and unity consciousness out into collective human hearts, the grid systems, the gateways, kingdoms, elementals, Gaia, even out into galactic levels sometimes because they are part of us and they are receiving energy. Right. And when they receive that energy, they can then reflect that back. So it's, it's um, that too becomes nonlinear, not bound by time space dynamics, becomes very present. So you can feel into what the Sunday Unity meditations are going to become. You can feel into those higher trajectories because this year is, is really just going off the charts. Um, and it would be highly complimentary if everyone assisted in creating the highest experience for everyone. You know, yeah. No waiting, no more waiting yeah. games, no more the light's going to do this and I, I know the truth and all that. You know, you can see it dissolving because it, uh, it was yeah. added to the old structure, which is gone. So as it dissolves, we're going, oh, there's so much more available. There's so much more flow and so much more divinity. It's really beautiful. And we relearn some things that we left here or recall some things from the past. But you'll notice that even the things that we were doing in Atlantis, Egypt, you know, those things, yeah. not applicable to the next reality, not, a prick, uh, not applicable yeah. the higher trajectory so you're like oh okay well that's really it's interesting to play with but we need to pay it forward all of this stuff all yes. of our experience we're paying forward into the the very new kind of clean slate that 5d consciousness is does that make sense yes it does uh let me ask you a couple more questions uh how important or how how um influential is our 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 efforts here in this realm in this transition in 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 so far as in respect to all the other dimensions Extreme. that we exist all in. connected there there is yeah. no separation you know that that is for our benefit in this school type mystery school atmosphere that we have going on down here let's say down here it's technically it's not down anywhere it's just denser um, but it's, it has a huge effect. That's the whole reason why the star seeds decided to show up during the shift in consciousness is because it does affect the higher dimensions. It does affect, there's like a trickle up effect of the, the more mm -hmm. that we raise our consciousness, we're not just returning to what we were. That makes no sense. You know, we are, we are right. blowing the doors off on what it means to be creator incarnate. We're assisting with this activation of the divine human genome, which carries the codes for pure source consciousness. That's the reason why we incarnated with this divine human genome is because it's capable of activating 12 strands of DNA, 144, 244. You know, you get into some, some pretty wild DNA structures the, the more you expand your consciousness, but it does have a trickle up effect. You know, even it's, the reason why we've played this let's ascend Gaia uh, game so many times is because it does have a, an effect, like I said earlier, on the entire galactic structure, on the possibilities for the universal structure, source technically rewriting an entire universal structure into harmony, you know, kind of explores the edges of duality and polarity and What's the farthest away from myself that I can get? And then I'm going to call it all back in to oneness. And that's what we're experiencing now is kind of a callback. We reached the edges of distortion. And now we're coming back into this uh, whole, which is just like a universal command, a universal decree yeah. for harmony. So everything that we do down in these realms does have and effect, it has a trickle-up effect because we do exist already in those higher realms. Yeah. So every fractal of your beingness, from a planetary consciousness, a planetary incarnation, to a star system level, to even if you're working with the formless realms, those kind of beings are an LOM level, it affects all of that. You know, because uh. they, us, at that level, are not the be-all, end-all. 
you know, that's our, our belief systems. It's like, that's the biggest you can get. And sources like, I am. So it, it oh. continues to have a trickle up effect. So it does matter. It does matter. Yeah. Yeah. We're expanding other dimensions. I'm getting bombarded right now. <laughs> I know my feet. About the last two minutes. I'm like trying to get my feet. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and we sure appreciate you spending this time with us. Let me ask you one last question. Uh, I, I, there's a lot of talk about the 144 or what people call twin flames. I don't particularly care for that label. Say divine conscious unions, the importance of the divine conscious union in the transition or the 144 in the transition. How important are those things? I would say not applicable at this point in our journey, yeah. there's a lot that you're going to find not applicable to my journey, not applicable to our journey. Um, the whole idea of twin flames is simply reuniting the tree of life into oneness. I mean, it's just, you know, from, from my perspective, it was never intended to be uh, a biblical type story of two beings, <laughs> you know, or two, you know, two souls or it, it, it served. That's the thing. We don't want to dishonor what we all went through mm -hmm. over the last few thousand years because it was a learning process. And sometimes, you know, humanity will take a belief system and run with it. And mm -hmm. it, it reached the edges of its applicability, let's say. And now we're, yeah. we're discovering, you know, that divine oneness, that's all within. It's all within. And even if yeah. you look at it from a classic mastery mystery school teaching of the divine flames and the threefold flame and your, you know, your two halves folding into one and becoming one with uh, God consciousness. It's all the same thing. You know, it's all the same yeah. story. It's all the same yeah. creation to get us to the point where we are now coming into divine oneness and a full experience of divine oneness. And there's so much more that's available so we kind of bless the old stories and let them be what they were and no judgment for people who are still um you know it's applicable to their journey maybe at their the point in uh, they are in their journey maybe they need that you know so we so we can't judge people for where they are in their journey or what they believe right to go through in order to break through but the important thing is to remember you don't just want another belief system. You don't just want another construct. You want you want freedom. You want freedom. Right. You know? And Free. when we really open up to that, as like the only rule of thumb would be divine source, cosmic light, love, unconditional, non-judgmental state as something to be attained. That would be, yeah. and again, make it loosey goosey. Don't put a lot of parameters around it because it is expanding. But yeah. when you really come into Stay open. the knowing of sources, divine love, and pursue that through all of your expression and all of your fractal and everything that's going through um, the old stories and the old consciousness, the old light. There's, you know, I live in Mount Shasta. There's a lot of old light dynamics here, but it is what it is. And I don't judge people for right. their journey. They need what they need when they need it. You know, it is yeah. all source. It's all love. It's all divine. You know, and there's no judgment yeah. on, oh, I'm so far ahead of whoever. That's nonsense, too. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Any uh, parting advice for your fellow brothers and sisters as we head into this mm. more frequent and more powerful energy day by day, week by week, month by month? I feel like all the guidance is there. I feel like everyone can feel it. You know in your heart what is true for you. And you know in your heart what is true, if you really feel into it, what is true when it comes to unity being the thing right now. Divine love, unifying in divine love and in divine service, especially with the service, you know, all of you, if you're not sure what your service route is or what should I do or whatever, just be 
the presence of God on earth. How's that for a task? Be the presence mm. and practice it and do your work and all, all is well, all is incredibly well. And the more it, if you are guided or feel like you want to join us on the Sunday Unity Meditations, we'd love to have you. It's, there's nothing exclusive about it. It's whoever is willing to do that activity, create your own activities. If you don't want to be attached to <laughs> Sandra Walter, I don't, I don't carry that. That's fine. You know, just make up your own Sunday unity meditation. Just get a lot of people together um, to infuse love into the planet and the, and the humans and the kingdoms, the elementals and everything on Sundays. And you will feel it. You will benefit from that energy, that field that's been created. And that's that it's free and it's open and it's it's beautiful and it's overriding and overriding all the damage that's done on Sundays with distortion right. and all that, you know, so it's, it's just knocking it out of the park right now when it comes to divine love. And don't forget that that's what you are. It's your natural state of beingness. Yeah. It's your natural human birthright yeah. to be in your creator state of consciousness. Sovereign. And let us be me. I'll, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll get that link from you. I'm going to send you a message and get that link from you. We'll put it out on our network and uh, see if we can join you on that. Get some people in there. This is um, we really appreciate you spending this special day with us. Yeah, it's my first Facebook Live, and it was such an honor to be here on your seven-year anniversary, brother. Congratulations. Thank you. Quite. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, and thank you for honoring us with your presence and and uh, having this conversation with us. Hope to see you again. We're going to be moving up to our own website and see what we can do to bring the world's first 24-hour day, seven-day-a-week video cast wow. with shows like this, vibrations like this. So uh, once we get that going, I'll reach out to you, and maybe we can – it's a platform, you know, for what you're doing and people like you are doing. And So, you know. We could uh, we could help you do that. We would love to do that. Yeah, and if you do it on a Sunday, we could do like a live unity meditation. That would be fun. That would be great. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. That's exactly what I was thinking. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay, we, you take care. You have a good day. Handle the energies well. Thank you so much for joining us. It was, it was an honor. It truly was an honor well, thank to you. meet you. Blessing to everyone. Really was. So much love. You too. Bye-bye.